Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Espen Croft. Thanks for watching. Now, this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, and this will be about MIDI SysX. To some, MIDI SysX is like black art, and I admit, MIDI SysX can be complicated. It can be fun, it can be easy, it can be annoying. But uh, you need to know something about MIDI SysX if you're going to work with vintage MIDI synthesizers. And this video is of course not meant to cover all MIDI SysX scenarios. That would be impossible. So let's get started. And just to recap, in 1983, the big manufacturers of keyboards and synthesizers decided that their gear should be able to talk to each other. So they invented MIDI, a language that lets your digital music devices communicate with each other. And you can say that MIDI is broken into two parts. You have MIDI channel messages, which is more about the performance, notes on, notes off, etc. And you have MIDI system messages, which are clock, transport, but also SysX. And herein lies one of our first challenges, because SysX messages are kind of open source. It's up to the product manufacturer to define how to use it, and it means different manufacturers use SysX messages differently. And so you're wondering, what can we use SysX for then? Well, on vintage synthesizers, if you want to do backups of your patches, load and save patches, you use SysX most of the time. You can send a SysX file to the synthesizer to update its firmware. And the most hands-on use is to change the parameters on a synthesizer. And this is the most fun thing and what we're going to do here. And unlike simple MIDI messages like note on, off, etc., basically you playing, SysX messages are sent in a format called a string, and that's what we're really going to focus on in this video. And so one easy example of how to send a SysX message to change the filter cutoff of a synth, let's use the Korg DW8000 or the module version uh, EX8000, which I have here. And here is an example of a SysX string made for the Korg DW8000. Now where in the world did I get these numbers and how can I use it? Well, there actually exists a roadmap. It's called the MIDI implementation chart and it's in the back of the manual. Ah, the manual to synthesizers. Well, this is my favorite reply when people ask me how a synthesizer works. I say, read the manual, it's all there. So just go online and download the manual for your vintage synthesizer and just browse through how it operates, etc. And when you get near the end of the manual, you will find you have a MIDI implementation chart or you'll get to the MIDI implementation of that synthesizer. And this is where the fun begins. It's in these last few pages that the synth manufacturer shows us how they use MIDI SysX messages to communicate in and out of this exact synthesizer. So these charts tell us exactly how this synth will respond if it receives certain MIDI SysX strings, or how it can transmit SysX data itself to another device, such as a computer, another synth, or whatever. And since our goal now was to control parameters of the synth, let's browse down to that section of the manual, parameter change. And so line by line, we can now see the data byte, the command we need to send to the synth, the Korg DW8000 in this case, to change a parameter. So let's break this down and see what it all means. Oh, and just so you know, a SysX string is sent in the hexadecimal number system, where the base value equals 16. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then you have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And each digit represents a decimal value. So let's break it down line by line and see what each command does and how it's written down. Every SysX message must start with F0. That's totally manufacturer independent. But then comes the manufacturer ID. In this case, it's 42 because that's the ID of Korg. Then comes the MIDI channel, and we use MIDI channel 1 in this example, and Korg says that should be written down as 3.0. Then we have the device ID 03, this being a DW8000 or EX8000. And then we have 4.1, which is parameter change. We're using SysX for that here. 
then Korg will have a parameter offset, which we will find in the MIDI implementation chart, in the bitmap chart. And in that chart, that is written down in a decimal form, so we'll have to convert it to hex, which is 0f. And then the parameter value itself on the DW8000, maximum filter cutoff is 63, and in hex, that is 3f. And every sysx message must end with f7, again, manufacturer independent. So to send a filter cutoff at maximum value on a DW8000, this is the sysx string you must send. So to summarize and break a sysx string down to something understandable, it goes something like this. You have start of message, you have this one, you, yes, you, I'm talking to you. Do this. This is what you're going to do. End of message. So the complete sysx string we just went through is exactly how the MIDI implementation chart of the DW8000 tells us to do it. And so now comes the more practical issues. How are we going to use this information to send the sysx string to the synthesizer? What gear do we have to have? Well, one type of gear is very useful, and that is a controller. When you buy a controller for a vintage synth, someone has already done the work for you. They've programmed each of the faders and knobs on the controller to send out sysx strings, just as I showed you, to control the different parameters on that synth. This controller is now pumping out hundreds and hundreds of sysx strings. You can also use a more generic controller and program the sysx strings into each of the knobs and faders yourself, or download templates from other people for that synth. But maybe the cheapest solution is to use a little converter box and convert controller changes from your master keyboard into sysx messages. And I have a little black box that can do pretty much everything you want in terms of MIDI messages, and that is... This is the event processor from MIDI Solutions. And with this, you can turn any MIDI message into another MIDI message. Controller changes, program changes, notes on, off, etc., etc., but also sysx. And what's cool about this is that every master keyboard or generic controller you can find sends out CC messages. And CC messages is a sort of controller message that came later in life, which almost all new hardware synthesizers use. They don't use sysx, they use controller changes. But what if we can convert those controller changes to sysx messages and thereby use your master keyboard's mod wheel to change the filter cutoff of a vintage synth, for instance? That's what I'm going to show you next. Almost every master keyboard you get today has some sort of knobs or faders on them that sends out controller changes, CC messages. Faders, etc. on all master keyboards has that. And the mod wheel itself also sends out a controller change, usually 0-1. For this example, I'm going to use this session CC controller, which I've had for a while now. And I can assign any CC number to the knobs if I want to. This is now CC number 20. And pay attention to the value, it goes from 0 to 127, the whole MIDI range. But I can easily assign that knob to CC number 119 if I want to. So let's use that for this example. So to program this with MIDI SysX, I go out of the computer and into the MIDI in of the event processor. And then I start up the software to start programming this. It doesn't even need external power, it gets it from the MIDI connector itself. So I'm going to use the MIDI Solutions programming software to program the event processor. So keep that uh, sysx string from before at the back of your brain right now. So let's generate the settings. And this box can do a lot more than just map out some sysx messages, which we shall see. In this plus version, you can store up to 32 different MIDI events, actually. So this is what we will do under functions. We will map a MIDI event. And then I choose the type of MIDI event I want to map, and you have all sorts to choose from. In my case, I want to map a controller change. And as you can remember, I set that knob on the CC controller to 119. So I'll just use controller change number 119 from this list of possible MIDI events to choose from. CC number 119 is often unused anyway, so that's no harm in using that. 
And what value do I want to put on that? Well, I don't want a hard value this time because I'm going to use a rotary controller. So I'll just leave that for value Y. And I want to map that to another MIDI event. And this time I want to map this to, you guessed it right, system exclusive. And now it wants me to enter that sysx string, which will be mapped to that knob on the controller. So now we just input that sysx string from before, the one we went through, controlling the filter cutoff on a DW8000. The only difference from the sysx string before is that now I don't want to enter any hard values for the filter cutoff value itself, because I want to use that rotary knob encoder to, to sweep the filter, so it has to go from zero to full strength. So instead of a hard value, I enter the value of double Ys so that the event processor can pick up on the rotary knob on the controller itself. And I end the message with F7 as I have to. And I press OK. So let's see what we've done so far. We've mapped the following MIDI event, the controller change 119, with a value of Y into a system exclusive string but I also have to scale the incoming range of Y. Remember that knob on the controller went from 0 to 127, so I have to specify that here. That's the default setting, by the way. But I also have to scale that outgoing range to correspond with the DW8000's range for filter cutoff, and that is from 0 to 63. So I'll pick that out from the list here. So now I've scaled, mapped and scaled that knob to correspond with both the controller and the DW8000. And you'll get a resume of what you've actually programmed on the event processor in the text file here below. This is a string you can see in bold above it. And all we have to do now is to send these settings to the event processor to program it once and for all. So you pick out your MIDI interface you're using and uh, just transmit the settings. It takes a little while depending on how many events you're sending. And then you can unplug it from the MIDI interface. And since I'm using the Korg EX8000 here, the module version with no keys, this is my setup. I use a MIDI merger and I have a master keyboard and the controller which you just saw going into that merger and out of that merger, I go in to the event processor in. And going out, the MIDI out of the event processor, I go in to the Korg EX8000. That way I can both play it and control it at the same time. So let's see how it works. And it does. See the value stops at 63 on the Korg, but it stops at 127 on the controller. So the mapping works perfectly. More complicated will be this module, the Kawaii K3M. Now let's check out the MIDI implementation chart on that. Now, as you can see, the setup is pretty much the same as on the Korg. You have the start of system exclusive, you have the ID number, machine ID, etc. But check out the data lines near the end there. On the Kawaii K3M, you have two different lines, value high and value low. And this is what you will find on different types of MIDI gear when it comes to entering the values of the different parameters or whatever. They can be more complex and more difficult to comprehend than on the Korg, which is uh, of the more fairly easy ones. So in this case, on the K3M, it says that each byte is divided into two bytes, the high nibble data byte and the low nibble data bytes. So when we're now going to program the event processor to change the filter cutoff on the K3M based on that rotary knob encoder, this is all the events we have to program to make that happen. So you can see it's a lot more complicated than the Korg W8000 we just previously did. I'm not going into uh, uh, all the details here, but suffice to say, every manufacturer of controllers for uh, vintage synthesizers has to deal with the MIDI implementation charts, 
uh, of the different manufacturers. So there's a lot of work going into mapping all this out to make a controller or even a basic template for uh, a generic controller, which I've uh, showed you earlier in this video. So let's see if the K3M responds to this string of SysX messages. Another thing you should know is that not all vintage synthesizers will respond in terms of updating their displays when receiving SysX data. And that can be both annoying and confusing. And pay attention to this K3M, the maximum value of filter cutoff on this is 99, where the Korg had 63. And while I'm turning the knob, nothing happens on the display. It receives MIDI, you can see that blinking there, but the display does not update. So does that mean it doesn't receive the SysX correctly? No, it does receive the SysX correctly, it's just the display that won't update. So if I'm playing the keyboard, I will hear the filter cutoff changing. I will just not see it on the display. But the display will update as I rotate the knob. It just won't do it in real time. That's the most annoying part. Let's hear it in action then. This is the K3M being controlled. K3M will update the filter in real time while I'm holding a chord, for instance. But some synths will not do that unless you take a new, make a new MIDI event like note on off, like the DX7 with its active sensing. So let's check out how I use that little session CC controller through the event processor to send SysX messages to both the Korg EX8000 and a Roland Juno 106 at the same time adjusting the filter while I play live in the studio. That's the beauty of programming a generic controller with outgoing SysX messages. Since they're using machine IDs and device IDs, you can mix and match different SysX strings going out of the same MIDI cable since they won't listen in on each other's uh, frequency if you want to use a radio terminology. So that means I can control the DW8000 and the Roland Juno 106 from the same generic controller on two different knobs, of course. Like I said in the beginning, this video is in no way meant to um, cover all basics of MIDI SysX, of course. That would be impossible in 20 minutes, not even possible in two hours. What I was hoping was that this video could help demystifying MIDI SysX a little bit and maybe inspire you to go out and find out more about MIDI SysX yourself. I have to say a big thanks to John from MIDI Solutions for giving me great support on how to work the event processor. And a big thanks to Rob from Retroactive Controllers. As always, I'm Espen Croft and I am the 80s. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.